Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel and your first steps into the contact sampler. In chapter three so far, we have checked out the basics of scripting. We've added our performance view with our custom background and we've put in our first controller. It's a slider that controls the volume of our very first group, Bells. You can dive in and add a lot more sliders for all the different groups, but right now we're gonna check out Knobs, which is a different type of UI interface controller. Let's dive in and check it out. Okay, to remind ourselves before of where we're up to, we were creating this custom performance view with this great background or very simple background anyway. And we created this slider which controls the volume of our bells groups. So as I play something with the volume all the way up, we can hear that bell sound ringing out with the sa other sample groups. And as I turn that down or completely off, absolutely none of the bell sound there. So really wonderful addition and the beginning of our script. And that's all happening when we dive into this spanner with the script that we can see here. So we have our on init block, which is making our performance view and making our first UI slider as soon as the instrument initializes or starts up. And we have an on UI control for our very first slider that is scripting it to the engine volume or the group volume of the bells section. So wonderful, good setup ready to go. Let's now start adding some more to this. So how is a knob different from a slider? And how, why would you use one or the other? A slider, if you saw the last video, check the description below for the full playlist if you missed that one. A slider is a very simple control with none of the features like labels or values being added. It's just a very simple fade up and down, which we just saw. That can be tied to anything and it can be fantastic for exactly that purpose. But if you want something to display a title of what it is it's controlling, or if you want it to display the value of what you're setting. So as you turn it up, it lets you know what value you are actually adding in. That's where a knob could actually come in handy. It follows a very similar process, but there are a few extra commands because of these extra features. And let's check that out now. So down here under the instrument effects, we have a low pass filter and we have a cutoff for that filter. So you can see there as I changed the cutoff, it was taking away some of the highs and then giving them back as I rolled it back up. A pretty standard sort of filter function. If we wanna control that cutoff filter from the interface though, this is how we could do it. We could do it with a knob. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna enter down a couple of times for a new line, tab over, and that's just all for consistency so I can clearly and easily see my code. And I'm gonna type in declare again, and this time I'm gonna type in UI underscore knob. Now a knob is very similar to the slider. So I do need to give it a variable integer name. So I'm gonna put the dollar sign there and I'm gonna call this one cut, short for cutoff. I like to keep my variable names short because I'm gonna be typing these out a lot and I don't wanna have really long names that I have to keep copying and pasting or remembering to type out. I also keep a little bit of a shorthand of the variables I have used. So if I've used cut on one thing, and I need another option for another cutoff or something else that could be labeled cut, I know that I've already taken that and I'm gonna call it something else. All the time I actually write down all the variables first that I could possibly think of that I'm going to be using in this project and just use those and then add any more if I need to. That way I've got all of my shorthand things already planned out and I can just go ahead and write everything in. Okay, so once I've declared the name for that one, I'm gonna space over and open some brackets because we're gonna to need to do the same thing here, but there's one extra thing that we're gonna need. There are actually three parameters, not just two. If we take a look in the contact guide, we've got the UI underscore knob here, and we can see inside the brackets what should be in here. We should have a minimum and maximum value, just like the slider, but then this thing, a display ratio. The knob is divided by a display ratio for display purposes. So basically, it's letting you know how big you want that knob to be. Now I just want them all at a standard size because I want enough space to put them all on there. So I'm just gonna put one for that. And then that way it's a ratio of one to one. It's the size that it should be. But you could put that up or down depending on what you want, but let's just put in one for now. And I recommend doing the same. So I'm gonna put in my minimum of zero, my maximum of one million, just like before with the slider. And then I adjusted it down based on what I want. And I'm gonna put in a comma one for the ratio. I'm gonna jump in down under here and I'm gonna put the make underscore persistent in straight away. I'll pop it in there now with the cut 
name instead. So that will make that control persistent as well. And I want to move it to a particular location. So let's put the move underscore control underscore px for pixels. And we're moving the cut variable. So let's pop that in. And where's our X and Y position going to go? Now I've worked it out before. I want it about 670 by 170 down. Let's try that. Hit apply. Now I mentioned before that you won't see it in here. I mentioned in a previous video that the width of the editor and the backing settings of contact is always about 580 pixels wide. So anything that goes beyond that point is off this screen. But that doesn't mean it's not in your interface. If you click over into the spanner, here it is down here in the interface, which is exactly where we want it. Now looking at this control, you can see where it's got the title and the value. And that's what's different about this control. It's obviously a knob, but it's doing the same thing as the slider's doing. It's just this time it has the name and the value. So the name up here is cut and the value is zero. Now, first of all, I wanna update it so that the cut is a particular name. I want the full cut off. Just because I didn't write cut off doesn't mean I don't want cut off in there. So if I come in here and I pop in underneath, I'm going to put in set underscore text and open some brackets and put something in here. Now, what do I want to set this text to? I want to name the variable. So I'm going to put in my cut there because obviously I'm setting the text on this cut control. Then I'm going to put in what the text is. And because this is a string or it's text, which we call strings, it needs to be in quotations. It's not enough to just put cut off in here because it's going to be thinking that this is some sort of command and it's going to have an error. In fact, let's see that. As soon as I hit apply, it's error. It's like, I don't know what this cut off thing is. So let's enclose that in some quotations there. Hit apply, no errors. And when we jump back to the interface, cut off is there in its full glory. So that's something just to bear in mind is that you need quotations around text because texts are strings, they're not integers, they're not values and they're not commands. So we need to define them as a string, which is the quotation marks. Okay, so we have set the knob and we've created the knob. Now we need to add a function, which as we know, needs a new callback, which is the on UI underscore control callback. So different from the on init is the on UI underscore control. And in brackets, we're gonna to need to define what control we're targeting, which is our dollar sign cut. So let's dive back into our script. Underneath this on UI control, I'm gonna go down into a new on I control. So on UI underscore control, and it's gonna be for the cut control. And I'm gonna enter down here as well and put end on leaving enough space. I always like to put that end on just in case I forget, you know, because I don't want there to be an error just because I've got no end on. So let's tab over and pop in a function. It's going to be very similar to this set underscore engine par. In fact, we're going to be using the same thing. Check out the previous video in this series on sliders to find out more about the set engine par function or command. But otherwise, we'll continue on with that knowledge now. So let's open our brackets. We know that we need a parameter as part of our set engine par. And the parameter is not gonna be engine par volume this time. It's actually something called engine underscore par underscore cutoff. Nice and simple, right? The cutoff knob inside any filter in contact is known as engine par cutoff. That's how contact knows that type of controller type. So we're saying that kind of controller type, and in a moment, we're gonna specify which filter that's actually on. First though, we need to add in the variable, and we know from the previous video that we need to add in cut here, because we want whatever the knob we drag to, whatever value it returns, to be added to that cutoff to change the cutoff knob. So when we change that cutoff, we basically want the engine power cutoff on that filter to update to the same value. So that's why we put that in there. It's exactly why variables are made, right? Because it's a variable number of between zero and one million. And wherever we put that control knob to is gonna return a different value. And that's why that value is in there because we can't just set it to a particular number. We need to set it to whatever that control is. Then the first thing is, is, is this in a group? Which it's not. So we can actually put comma negative one. We don't have this in a group. If we scroll down, it's outside of the group and it's actually in the instrument level in an insert effect. If we take a look at the manual again, we know that the next thing is talking about the slot. So what slot is this? And it's zero based, as in we start with zero, not one. So if we take a look at this cutoff filter, it's in the first slot. So that's actually slot zero, not slot one. So let's jump up here and pop in zero. 
Now in the last video, we just put in negative one because it wasn't an insert effect or a send effect, but actually we're at the insert effect level. So we probably need to put a one here. If we take a look at this filter again, it's under the insert effects. So we're gonna to need to put a one to specify to look here, not over here. So let's put our one in there and close our brackets and hit apply. Now, when we jump over here and turn this to say maybe halfway-ish, then when we come back into our spanner, jump down and have a look at the cutoff filter, we can see it's reflecting the same thing. Great, we've tied them together. So now cutoff can be changed by that knob, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. But there is something that's a little bit amiss. If we look at the label down here, it's saying 836.8 Hertz. That's a particular value that this knob is being set to. If we look at our interface though, it's got just a random value in there, a value of somewhere between zero and one million. It's updating based on the minimum and maximum value, which we set to zero and one million, but we want it to read what the cutoff filter is actually reading. So we need one last thing here. In the UI control here for the cut, every time we move that cut, we wanna set the control label a little bit different each time. The reason we're doing it here in an on UI control is we don't want the label to be set on initialization because then every time we change the variable, it will do nothing because it will have to wait until we restart the instrument and actually to update it. That's not what we want. We're doing it in the UI control callback because that means that every time we move that control, it will update the label. So under here, we want to use a command called set underscore knob underscore label. Of course, I would definitely recommend you consult the manual for every different control or command or function just to check out what's going on. But what it needs here is it needs the variable and then it needs the value that that variable is adjusting. So we're gonna pop in our variable to begin with, which is our cut, nice and easy, comma that. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky though. We actually need a command within the command to make this work. We don't know a fixed variable. Wait, we could think it's maybe a thousand or 1K and I could put a thousand in here and hit apply and then any time I come over to the knob and move it, it's just gonna put a thousand, but it's not dynamic. It's not changing anything. We need it to change so that whatever I move the cutoff filter to, it's gonna create a new value for that cutoff filter and return that back to the screen on the UI control. So to do that, we need to replace this fixed value with a command in order to get a particular thing and return it. So we're gonna use a command that's very similar to the set engine part. We're actually gonna use a get engine par display or disp. So we can type in get underscore engine underscore part underscore disp for display. And then we're gonna open and close brackets here just so that we know that we've always got an open and close bracket and then a close for these bigger brackets. That's gonna be important. Now inside these brackets, we wanna type in the rest of the function or the rest of the command. It has very similar parameters to the set engine par function we need to tell it what cutoff filter to look at and where that cutoff filter is. So first of all, we type in the engine underscore par underscore cutoff. So that's not in a group, so negative one. It is in the first instrument slot, so that's a zero there. And it's an insert effect, not a send, so that's a one there. All right, let's hit apply. No errors yet, that's a good sign. So let's come back to our interface and change that up and down. And voila, look at that, returning 1.7K there. And if we dive back in, take a look at our cutoff filter, and there it is, 1.7K. So now you have your very first effects cutoff controller ready to go, and you can play it however you like. Really cool stuff, the very first knob in your designed instrument. All right, there we have it. Now our UI controls are growing and we have another type of control available to us. We have both sliders and knobs and they're both here in our instrument ready to go. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at the last type that we'll be exploring in this chapter, which is a button, a UI underscore button. So definitely subscribe and ding that bell so you get notified when that happens and I will catch you in the next one.